How you doing folks? I'd like to introduce you to the Honeywell GTCP 131-9A APU. Now most of you probably won't know what that actually is, or what this is. An Airbus A320 has a third engine, that's up in the tail of the aircraft, okay? And this is what that is. This is a gas turbine engine, which is this section from maybe here to here, powering a compressor, which, here, which sits at around this section here, and a generator, okay? The gas turbine engine puts out around 600 equivalent horsepower to turn this compressor, which powers the pneumatic systems on the aircraft, and the generator, which powers all the electrical systems on the aircraft, predominantly when it's on the ground. But it can be used in the air as well as necessary. The engine is made up of a single-stage centrifugal flow compressor feeding a reverse flow annular combustion can and a two-stage axial flow turbine. That, uh, that power section is then supplying uh, power to a single-stage centrifugal flow compressor which is generating the pneumatic power and uh, that pneumatic power comes off down to a duct which we're going to look at here. Then the shaft comes through the load compressor and it comes into a gearbox and we will have a look at the gearbox here. So, what you're looking at on the outside of the engine at the moment, this, uh, this angle is actually an oil cooler here, which is this section, and these are a set of cooling ducts. So we've got a, a gearbox driven cooling fan here, which is pulling air in through an inlet venom. The air comes in through the inlet venom, through the fan and over into the oil cooler, and is discharged outside the aircraft through here and then down into a uh, flange that's on the aircraft itself. The air for the actual engine and for the low compressor goes in through the, uh, through the underside here. There is an inlet screen there and uh, it either will go forward or aft. If it goes forward, it goes into the load compressor through a set of inlet guide vanes, which, which control the amount of flow of air into the uh, compressor, or it goes into the power section. Um, there are no inlet guide vanes in the power section, and the diffuser, which uh, increases the pressure from the uh, compressor rotor, is also of a fixed, uh, fixed variety. It does not uh, have uh, uh, variable guide vanes. Looking at the APU from a different perspective, this is the air inlet, and the air inlet is taking air from the air inlet flange and air inlet ducting that is on the bottom of an Airbus A320. There is an air inlet door uh, which allows the air in when the APU is running and closes when it's not. So, we have two places the air goes here. If it's going from our perspective down, it's going into the load compressor which is in here inside this scroll housing going up is going into the power section into the uh, single stage centrifugal compressor and then it goes into the combustion chamber we have a set of fuel nozzles here which is where the fuel nozzle uh, the fuel is added there are 10 fuel nozzles in total on this engine and um, the direction of the gas is reverses so it's a reverse flow annular combustion chamber and it then goes through a two-stage axial flow turbine section and uh, then the gases are discharged through the exhaust of the, uh, the APU exhaust at the tail of the aircraft. Uh, many of you will be familiar with the noise of what sounds like an engine running when you're boarding an aircraft. Um, the main engine will never be running when you're boarding an aircraft. What you hear is actually this at the tail of the plane. And if you look at the tail of the plane, you will see the APU exhaust. And um, it's in a stainless steel cowling and uh, that's what that exhaust actually mates up with and there's a set of silencers in there as well too. I'm going to show you now uh, some other aspects to the engine, how the gases are managed from the load compressor and then we we'll move on to the gearbox. As I've uh, previously suggested the power section which is in this part here of the APU is driving a load compressor. The load compressor is a separate compressor which, uh, which sole purpose is to supply pneumatic power to the aircraft. The load compressor is built into this scroll housing here and the, the air discharge from that load compressor comes through this uh, compressor discharge duct and either goes through a load valve here or it goes through a surge valve here. If it's going through the surge valve, it's going out the exhaust and it's not being used for anything. So if the aircraft does not require uh, any compressed air, the surge valve will be open, the load valve will be closed and the inlet guide vanes, which are at the inlet of the load compressor, will also be closed off. Those inlet guide vanes can modulate along with the, uh, uh, the surge valve in order to manage the airflow required by the aircraft. So the ECB, the electronic control box, will actually manage that. There are also a set of flow sensors on the APU. There is a differential pressure sensor, in a total pressure sensor, there is an inlet pressure sensor and an inlet temperature sensor. All of those sensors are used to uh, analyze the airflow uh, and the pressures being produced by the load compressor 
and to control the APU. Um, fueling for the APU is then managed by a fuel control unit, which is actually not fitted on this particular engine and has been removed as per customer request, but uh, would normally be fitted on the gearbox further down here. We'll get into that when we're talking about the gearbox. So what we're looking at here is the surge control valve. This is a fuel actuated uh, pneumatic valve which um, manages the airflow from the compressor along with the inlet guide vanes and the load valve which is just out of shot at the moment. We also have the um, two of the flow sensors. This is the differential pressure sensor and the total pressure sensor. Um, and then hidden away we have the uh, inlet temperature and inlet pressure sensors as well too. So um, we're now going to have a look at the load valve as well too. So now what we're looking at is the forward end of the engine, okay? So uh, this is the load valve that I mentioned before, which is uh, what um, opens and closes to allow air uh, from the load compressor into the aircraft pneumatic system. When this is closed, all the air that's produced by the load compressor is discharged through the surge valve. And what we're also looking at here is the gearbox, okay? Now the gearbox has uh, two responsibilities. One is for driving ancillaries related to the engine, and the other is for driving the generator. Okay, the generator drives. Uh, the generator produces electrical power for the aircraft to use. Okay, it has uh, 98 kilowatts of output, and uh, so it's quite powerful for its size. It's powerful enough to light a small town, really, when you think about it like that. We have a starter motor here because the APU is electrically started uh, using two 28 volts uh, nickel cadmium uh, batteries that are on the aircraft, and we have a lube module here or an oil pump. Um, so this has an oil pressure and scavenge pump built into one. Um, onto this is also normally mounted a fuel control unit which manages the fueling for the APU and provides fuel pressure to both the surge control valve and to the inlet guide vane actuator, which are both fuel actuated, both manage air. Um, obviously we haven't got a generator fitted, so what you're looking at here is the drive path where the generator is fitted. It normally comes out probably about uh, a foot away from the APU, a big large black conical shaped thing. I'll try and show you one at a later stage. And we have the cooling fan, which is also driven from the uh, gearbox. And then here we have a, an oil fill cap. Um, it takes turbine engine oil, uh, six quarts of it, seven quarts. And um, then these are your fan ducts, which I mentioned earlier on from a different perspective. Okay, so what we're looking at here now is the uh, second stage turbine inside the exhaust housing. So um, if I reach my hand in there, I can actually rotate that in the normal direction of rotation. That uh, normal uh, speed of rotation happens to be 48,800 RPM, so they spin incredibly fast. It's worth pointing out that uh, many of the features and functions of this, uh, this particular engine uh, would, would, form, it would be very similar to what would be fitted to a helicopter or a turboprop engine. So um, there's an awful lot of commonality between those different types of uh, different types of gas turbine engines. This uh, falls under the category of a turbo shaft engine, and that shaft happens to be driving uh, the aforementioned compressor and generator. Okay, so earlier on you uh, heard me mention um, centrifugal uh, compressors and axial turbines, uh, but what are they? Um, well, you're looking at a set here from uh, a 131-9A. Uh, this is a load compressor rotor. It is centrifugal because the air comes in here and is discharged here at the extrusor. Uh, this is the engine compressor rotor. It is significantly bigger than the load compressor rotor because it has to supply more air for the combustion process. This is the first stage turbine rotor here and this is the second stage turbine rotor here. These are both axial flow because the gases travel through the axis rather than the radius. So uh, these would actually be radial outflow compressors or centrifugal compressors. It's another way of putting it. Okay, so we've, um, we've shown you what makes up an, air, uh, an aircraft APU and what, uh, what it consists of, how it operates, and um, basically all the subcomponents of it. But uh, the last thing that you're probably going to want to see is one of them actually running. Um, so uh, you're going to have to wait for another video for that. But uh, thanks very much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll keep you updated and we'll get one of these fired up with the test cell.